Welcome to another unit in this SPSS course. This time I'm going to talk about how we can use the R essentials for SPSS to run a Hackman regression model or rather how to use Hackman correction in SPSS. Well, two thing, uh, things at the beginning. First off, if you never heard about the R essentials, that's like a plug-in or add-on for SPSS, which allows for additional functionalities. If you want to know how to install this, where to get this, then you can take a look at the corresponding unit in this same course. Under the assumption that you already installed them, well, some additional words, what are we actually using this Hackman model for? Well, imagine you want to actually build a model which explains in how far a rating of a small medium sized company or of a startup actually comes to be. The problem is, well, first off, they need to be established. They need to survive at the market. So whenever you take a look, at those companies which are still in the market, they already survived. So you do not get any information about those ones who already left the market. So you're missing some information. It's like as if you're working with censored data. What the Heckman model actually does is in a basic version, it runs two steps. The first step is like a probit regression where the dependent is a zero one company survives, does not survive. So you provide a model which describes which factors influence whether a company survives or not. And then in the second step, which builds on this first step, you take a look under the assumption that the company survived. What are impact factors that describe, well, what its performance is? But the second step happens under the assumption that the company already survived. So you're adding this under the assumption that the company survived. And how we do this, we can actually see if we go to analyze and then regression. And then down here, we find Hackman regression. We'll just reset this for a moment. So the first step, that's the part up here called selection. So with selection, we have the first variable survival, which we can put here. And then we have the independent variables, whatever influences survival. So first I put survival to dependent variable, and then I can select what influences the survival of a company. So here, for example, I can say it's the capitalization and the joint experience of the founders. Once I build this model for survival, I can then build my second model, my second step model, which tells me something about, well, as I said, the performance ranking. So I can put here my performance rating, which also depends perhaps on the first two variables and on how many loans they have. So this would be my second model. So first I estimate this and then under the assumption that they already survived, what about the performance rating? Then we have here two different estimation methods. The way I describe this, that's actually here the classical two-step approach. We could add additional outcome models, but at this point I'll leave it as the simple approach that I just explained. Click OK. And we get some additional background information and then here our estimates. So the first part, that's our probit regression explaining the survival of a company. So here we see in how far the two variables I selected, the F2 and the F3. So F3 was experience. F2 was capitalization and how far they impact this and whether they are having a significant impact or not. Then D3 
the outcome part, that's actually the model we were interested in. So F4, that's the variable for the rating. And those two here, they are actually the in three variables I selected as impact factors. And here I can see capitalization and experience also matter for the rating. Loans, however, do not. And then finally, I have here the ins inverse Mills ratio that more or less shows in how far this is impacted by the results from the model before. However, the important part is that here these estimates for the three variables are different if I run this model as compared when I run a normal linear regression model where I do not control for this. We can test this by just running a linear regression model with performance rating as dependent and those three as independent. So if I do this, see here, still they are significant, the third one is not, but that's what we see if we take a look at our parameter estimates. those ones slightly differ. Not this much, except for the loans, which here is very much lower than in the other part. But for those ones, I have like 0 0.051, 0 0.061. Up here, I have smaller values with 0 0.047, 0 0.056. So there are some differences to the general outcome. In this model, they are not so severe, but they could be even more severe. And well, that's then already everything I wanted to mention in this context of using the Heckman selection model or the Heckman regression approach. So I hope you liked the short introduction. And if you're looking for additional input on working with SPSS, feel free to visit the rest of this course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.